Good afternoon and welcome to Word on Your Side. I'm Hannah Foster. And I'm Megan Gorman. In today's programme... Seven people have been arrested in connection with the murder of Sunderland man and father of four, David Walsh. Sunderland residents voice their opinions on how city's budget should be spent. David Cameron calls for airstrikes in Syria. The Chronicle publishes the their list of the most influential people in the North East. Bitterly cold we weather conditions mark the beginning of winter in Sunderland. And all of the top sports stories. But first, investigations are... Un but first, investigations are underway after a man was found severely injured on Cannon Cocken Street in Sunderland. James Hamilton has more. Tributes have been made to David Walsh after he was attacked on Friday night. He was later pronounced dead in hospital. Seven people have been arrested in, in regards to the crime and have been questioned by the police. However, the police are still looking for anyone who have, may have any information on the attack. Tributes include people saying he was a lovely, hard-working lad it's believed he's left behind a wife and four children. Police are urging witnesses to come forward with any information they believe may help with their investigation. Visit our Facebook page, Word on Wearside, where you can find all the police contact details. Residents of Sunderland have been invited by councillors to voice their opinions on whether they think money from central government should be spent. Alice Winnie reports. The City of Sunderland is facing budget cuts of £110 million in the next four years from the UK government. Um, they're going to be talking about the bins, collections, refuge, um, benefits, everything to do with the things that are going to affect the local people. Now I'm going to be speaking to some of the councillors and the local people around the area to see what they think about the cuts impending on their city. We had a, lot of, a good chance to put our views forward put some ideas forward for how we can work together or the council can kind of take stuff that we've put forward away and hopefully come up with some good, I good ideas and projects. It was a really um, engaging morning considering it was freezing cold outside and um, uh, early on a Monday morning everyone was uh, very um, open to discussion and had a lot to say. It's been, and it's really good to meet other people who care, because I do care about my city. I, not for me, I'm getting old, but you know, I have children who live here and I'll have grandchildren, um, so it is, it is important for the young people that people who can have, have a voice use it, and we encourage young people to use their voice and, and think about their city. After the meeting, Councillor Peter Gibson also outlined the three main cuts that Sunderland will be facing. The grants that we receive from the government, those those grants are going to be cut drastically and that's going to affect the people of Sunderland, um, the, the vulnerable, the young people, the children, the, there are going to be all sorts of areas where it's going to affect, you know, if you look at uh, our refuge collections service, that that's going to be affected, everything that the council provides is going to be affected. Mm. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Cinemas across the North East are refusing to play an advert promoting Christianity. The advert which recites the Lord's Prayer has been boycotted by Odeon, Cineworld and View Chains because they said it could offend people. The Church of England is saying it's an attack on free speech. I went out into Sunderland to find out more. Our Father in Heaven, can it be your name? Three of the UK's leading cinema chains have refused to show an advert based on religion. The 60-second advert for a new Church of England website, JustPray.UK, shows members of the public saying the Lord's Prayer. The advert was originally cleared by the Cinema Advertising Authority and British Board of Film Classification. However, Audion, Cineworld and View believe that showing this advert could be seen as an attack on free speech, potentially offending people who visit their cinemas. I went out onto the streets of Sunderland to find out whether they think the advert should be banned. It's so wrong. Everybody should have a chance to be their own religion and be advertised no matter where or how. There's a there's freedom to, to express everything. So if these cinemas can can do adverts, like different advert advertisements, why did why did they have to ban this one? I think it's unfair for that. Digital Cinema Media say they have a strict policy not to run advertising based on personal beliefs. However, the Church of England remain hopeful that their adverts will be coming to a cinema near you. Amen. 
David Cameron will propose in government today a £12 billion increase on equipment spending to strengthen the UK's military response to terror attacks. Mr Cameron will build up a case this week for MPs on whether the UK will deliver airstrikes on IS-dominated areas of Syria. We spoke to the people in our region on whether or not they believed bombing Syria was the right thing to do. Ethan Lawson Marshall reports. And now to weather, high winds and snowfall battered the northeast this weekend, causing the Met Office to issue a severe weather warning. Jack Skinner and Cameron Wellburn report from Roker Beach. Hi, my name is Jack Skinner. I'm reporting from Roker Seafront, where the weather is absolutely terrible. It is wet, windy, and it is Baltic out here. So if you plan on going out, I would say definitely wrap up. With the increasingly worse weather reaching lows of just two degrees today, we wanted to find out how the people of Sunderland were preparing for what's to come. Start putting my thick coats on, my caps on, and my thick woolly socks on. Heating's turned up in the house and everything. I'm quite prepared for the bad weather now. The winter weather this year, not very prepared. So I know the government often put things in place to say we should have blankets and kids inside our car to make sure that, you know, if, in the case of an emergency, that we have something prepared. But hand on heart, I'm, I'm not very prepared this year. But fingers crossed it's not too bad. Frostlings are set to open Sunderland's Frost Village on Thursday. Open until Christmas Eve, it will include an ice rink in Keel Square, as well as a festive market with the Vogue site holding a Christmas fun fair. The Frostlings kicked off the festivities last week, helping with the light switch on. Emily Hugel, who works with the Frostlings and is a member of Theatre Space North East, is here talking with us now. Hi, Emily. Hi. So how are we doing today? Uh, great, thank you. How are you? So do you just want to tell us a bit about what you do with the Frostlings? Well, I have been helping out to actually bring them to Sunderland. Um, it's been really amazing working with them so far. They were uh, found by um, the Sunderland Business Improvement District to, and I asked them if they could possibly bring a piece of frost land with them here and they're helping to build an ice rink in Kill Square. Yeah, that's great. Now, yeah. you also do work with Theatre Space North East. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do with them? Well, to be honest, at the minute, they have actually a lot going on. Um, they're currently trying to find a new home to base the company in and they are help, sorry, we're having help with the funding um, and it's going through the Indiegogo com uh, sorry, campaign. It is a community project to have a rehearsal space for in Sunderland for many people to use. Um, it can, any more information can be found at Facebook slash Theatre Space NE. Um, to be honest, it's just it's really an, it's amazing to work for. Yeah, that sounds great. Now back to the Frostlings mm -hmm. though, how did they come about? Well, um, they came about because they were trying to find a new place. Um, they were travelling through various lands and they wanted to bring some of the Frostland with them. Uh, so when they got, in, sorry, when Sunland Business District got in touch with them, they brought up the idea of bringing an ice rink so that people of all ages can be taught ice, sorry, can be taught how to ice skate and. Uh, it was just an amazing idea. There's going to be a special frost village built, and they're all helping to make that. Um, it's going to have a special festive fair where there's going to be all sorts of rides brought out. Or any more information can be found at www.sunlandchristmas.co.uk. And a lot, there's going to be so many more visits from the Frostlings coming about with the helping to make fr uh, the frost village itself. So how are they involved? Uh, they were involved with the Christmas lights. What sort of things, what was that like and how did they find that? Uh, they went there and I'll, I was helping look after them. Uh, they went and met some of the people of Sunderland. Uh, they got loads of photos taken with loads of people. And then they actually got up on the stage and told, basically spoke to um, the radio presenters that they had there and said everything that they were going to be doing over the next few weeks with the Frost Village and the ice rink and the festive fair and just basically saying how amazing it's going to be to be here in Sunderland because they're very, very excited about being here because it's completely different. So what's the best thing about working with them? 
it's just it's seen how unusual they are. They're quite quirky characters. Uh, they're amazing people to work with, um, and just it's it's amazing to see how much they find our area different to theirs because apparently theirs always winter. Now, uh, for anyone who does want to see the Frostlings, where can they be found for the rest of well, Christmas? Through the rest of through November and December, they're going to be making a few more visits. Um, they'll be here on Thursday around the city centre, and then they'll be here next Saturday and Sunday, and then they'll be making a few visits after that. Well, thank you very much. That was Emily Hugill, who works with the Frostlings and Theatre Space North East. But now, a crucial match is being played tonight. That's see Sam Allardyce's men take on Crystal Palace. James Hamilton joins us live from the Stadium of Light. Build as a must-win match for Sunderland. Alan Pardew's team, if they win tonight, will go two points ahead and level with Bournemouth, however still in the relegation zone just below Newcastle. He does face a tricky opposition, however, as Alan Pardew heads back up north with Crystal Palace, who are doing particularly well this season. Despite the weather, the fan zone is still being built and expected to go ahead as per usual. This is a new introduction to the Stadium of Light, which has happened all season, and which is hoped to bring more fans to the stadium and enjoy football, not just as a sport, but an evening of entertainment. That's all from us today at Word on Wearside. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bye.